Inside their walls, the people are safe from exposure to the unnamed horror that broke the world long ago. But now Bear, the last scientist in Forgehead, takes a case that threatens to throw that safety into question. Someone has been terminally exposed to the phenomenon, despite never having ventured outside the walls. This has only happened once before, to Bear's father. With the safety of Forgehead in question, and an opportunity to finally discover what happened to his father, Bear must leave the safety of the walls to unravel the mysteries left behind by the pre-cataclysm world, a task that will require him to join the Interloper Initiative, the team who crewed the gigantic crawler landships, the only vehicles that can roam the world outside the walls in relative safety. Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Air's Lair. I'm your host, Jonathan Taylor. Given this uh, video is going to be released at the beginning of winter, or when the, or the time when winter is supposed to be setting in, I thought I would take the opportunity to review a book that was thematically appropriate. And for that purpose, I have chosen Icebreaker, the first book of the Interloper trilogy by Stephen William Hanna. This book is uh, marketed as a uh, sci-fi horror novel, which would technically make it the second such book I've uh, uh, read and reviewed for this channel. However, for various reasons I, I won't go into, I don't necessarily think this label applies here. But I will say that it is uh, thematically appropriate, uh, you know, given the, uh, given my, uh, uh, given what I, you know, given what I set out to review. Uh, now, what else can I say about this, uh, uh, about this book? Well, the TLEW for this review is, this book delivers. From an, uh, uh, you know, from an exciting setup and an uh, intriguing premise, the book manages to take a, uh, a somewhat uh, standard, uh, standard narrative and, um, and, and utilize it in such a way as to deliver a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of thrills and a lot of uh, excitement, while also, uh, while also bringing forth uh, a lot of very interesting uh, talking points and exciting conclusions. So if anything about that uh, synopsis I just read sounds, uh, you know, sounds interesting to you, then I can only go ahead and you, uh, I can only recommend that you go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, buy this book, buy, read the book, etc. At the very least, I can say that I am very much tempted to go through the rest of this trilogy. In due time, however. For those of you who want to know a little bit uh, more about the book before you decide to uh, devote your time to it, well, that's what the rest of this video is uh, going to be about. The plot of this book follows uh, Benjamin Bear Woods, one of the uh, one of the last scientists, if not the uh, last remaining scientist of a of a world that has been hit by a by an apocalyptic event known as uh, the Cataclysm. Bear has studied um, its uh, you know its effects and the behavior of its uh, aftershocks for uh, his entire life. However, he finds that there, however, even after all of his research, there is still a significant uh, gap in his uh, in his knowledge. And when an opportunity presents itself for him to uh, study these uh, aftershocks up close, he decides to um, you know he very, he very much decides to uh, uh, take it. Even though it leads to, you know, leads to him having uh, supplemental tasks and exposing himself to supplemental dangers. The first thing that I would like to uh, talk about, as far as uh, uh, with regards to this book, is how effective its uh, world building is. I won't delve uh, too deeply into what the uh, cataclysm itself is because it is an in-universe mystery, and a lot of the plot is re revolves around you know figuring it out. But I do have to say that um, that, that uh, the ways in which the uh, society, in which societies or you know communities of people uh, have uh, countered it is uh, has been uh, quite interesting to has been quite interesting to follow. The survivors that have been uh, left behind in its wake have found uh, you know have found their own um, unique, distinctive, and uh, easy to follow ways in which, with which to uh, counter the, uh, you know, the aftershocks of the, uh, of the cataclysm. And uh, observing the 
uh, inserting the procedures and uh, operations that are uh, you know that are in place in order to um, in order to be able to face off against it is has actually been a very interesting aspect of the story to explore in regard and with regards to how exactly uh, you know human ingenuity has found a way to uh, counter uh, this particular uh, quite sizable uh, uh, quite sizable problem. <clears throat> Uh, aside from the uh, aside from this uh, you know more technical administrative scientific aspect of uh, world building, uh, there is some attention given to uh, the uh, given to its software aspects, particularly the uh, cultural aspects, namely in terms of how um, in terms of how people respond to this very surreal event that has happened uh, that has happened around them, how exactly that uh, you know goes on to shape their lives. And how that in turn influences their uh, motivations and goals, which in turn also influences the kinds of uh, organizations and uh, associations, clubs, uh, in the loosest sense possible. Um, they, uh, you know, they uh, they end up developing and joining and working towards. Uh, speaking of, uh, or rather, given that I've already kind of touched upon it, uh, the characterization is another high point of the story. Um, while, while there isn't a lot of uh, character development uh, throughout this book, not necessarily, when one actually observes all of the uh, information that is presented about the characters, or at least about the uh, named characters, there is a surprising degree of depth and dimension that is to be, uh, and that is to be uh, observed here, that is to be observed from how it is that these um, uh, you know that these people uh, handle themselves and how they relate to each other. There's a lot of room for these uh, characters to both clash and synergize, which uh, which ultimately makes their which ultimately makes a lot of their uh, interactions all the more all the more rewarding. Not to mention that even though that even though this world has been afflicted by a very surreal event, all of the responses that people have towards um, you know towards that event. Are still, you know, are still grounded and are still uh, relate uh, relatable. Even the villains of this piece have a have a have a distinguish have a distinguishable method behind their madness, which is quite which is quite interesting to follow, if I may <laughs> if I may say so. If, however, I were to point out uh, one uh, one weak point within this uh, uh, within this novel, that would have to be uh, that would have to be the plotting. It's not bad per se but it is it is predictable it uh, the author really makes no attempt to hide obfuscate or subvert what exactly it is that he is uh, you know that he's going for with this uh, 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 you know with uh, with this story uh, that being said it is still uh, it is still not bad and he still manages to be flexible enough with the uh, uh, you know with the narrative in order to introduce some new in order to introduce some new aspects to uh, how it is that these uh, how it is that these characters uh, react or confront various challenges, and with regards to how the um, how the world itself or the uh, principles that are that are established uh, actually function. So even though the plot doesn't uh, the, you know doesn't stand out or uh, or uh, come across as uh, distinctly memorable. In a you know, in a, in a sizable way, it does serve its purpose when it comes to elevating other aspects of this uh, 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 other aspects of this book. I am still left with uh, some questions now that I've uh, you know now that I've uh, gone through it. However, I am pretty certain the rest of the trilogy will do a you know will do a pretty good job at uh, addressing those. Overall, this book manages to take a uh, simple. Um, uh, a simple premise and narrative, and uh, and man and manages to uh, manages with a very entertaining uh, presentation to lead the uh, you know to lead its readers into some um, some uh, varied and uh, uh, you know intense filled uh, moments and plot points, all the all the way to some all the way to some intriguing and exciting conclusions. My final rating for Icebreaker. Is a four out of five. And that was my review. Thank you for your attention. 
If you enjoyed it, please like the video and maybe even share it wherever you think other people will also like the video. If there is anything you'd like to add to the book or to my review of it, that's what the comment section is for. And if you want to see when my next video gets released, well then uh, please subscribe. And ideally also ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will ask of you in order to uh, keep you notified. Uh, my books, the very first of my own uh, Heir to the Empire uh, series, The Next Generation and The Path Not Taken, are available at various book retailers under their respective links in the description down below, right past my social media links, which I suggest you check out should you choose to. Additionally, you have the option of supporting me on Patreon, where, depending upon the uh, level at which you pledge, you will receive uh, various perks such as early access to my uh, videos and scripts, both for this channel and my second one. Because yes, I also have a second channel, where I talk about whatever it is that interests me uh, at any given moment. And yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it for my end. Until next time, I am Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair.